Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing how to identify the spirit of religion. My friend, first and foremost, let me say this before I give you this exhortation, that the scriptures clearly tell us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in Matthew, he said in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, he said, the wheat and the tares grow together. And oftentimes, my friend, when a person has a spirit of religion, that means that you think that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. You think that you have eternal life. But my friend, multitudes and masses of people, they're religious. And my assignment is to to give us understanding so that you can do what Paul said. Listen to what Paul told the church in Corinth, chapter two. This is a very important text. And every last one of us that believe we follow Christ, you must know this text. Second Corinthians chapter 13, Paul said this. He said, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, prove your own self, know not your own self, how that Jesus Christ, he is in you, except you be a reprobate, reprobate. That means that you are not truly wheat. You are not a bona fide follower of Jesus Christ because Paul said, if you're not Filled with Christ, he said, in this vessel, we have a treasure in this earthen vessel, vessel, the face of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the teacher, the communicator of heaven is the Holy Spirit. He said, now, if you don't test yourself, you can be a reprobate and don't know. So my friend, my assignment is to remind us as I teach this, that the Bible says that in the day of Noah, before Christ uh, uh, went even to the cross thousands of years later, the Bible says it shall be the same when Christ returned, just as it was before God commanded Noah to tell the owl, to tell the cat, the dog, the horse, the zebra to come into the ark. One female, one male. Before he commanded those animals to come into that ark, before God judged the entire earth, it was what? The same as it will be when Jesus returned. People were reveling, partying, self-indulged, having a good time. And unfortunately, many of us that really have a spirit of religion, we're just having a good old time too. And we don't understand, my friend, that being emotional and being creatures of habit, it could deceive you, emotion and habit, because you are faithful in going to church every week. You're faithful in going to midweek service. You're faithful in getting up in the morning, doing your daily devotion. You're even faithful in praying. It doesn't mean that you are in the faith. I got to say it again, my friend, regiment, a uh, uh, habit could trick you to thinking that you are in right standing and you are not a wheat, you're a tear. And my job is to show you what to look for. If in fact you have been deceived because my friend, the, the number one place that people pick up a spirit of religion and a spirit could be evil or it could also mean my friend that because God is spirit. And they that worship God, we must worship him in spirit and truth. So God is spirit, okay? But the fruit of a spirit, the fruit, the mindset, the personality of the spirit, you will know it by the fruit. So when a person has a spirit of religion, that means that they do religious things. But follow me, because you you got to understand, you can meet God... And, and, and no doubt you will become religious, but you can, my friend, be religious 
and have never met God. And this is why we must know what the fruit, the fruits of the spirit. What is the fruit of God's spirit? The fruit of that spirit in you is a desire for holiness. You will have faith in the midst of crisis. And remember, my friend, true character will always be revealed when you and I are in a crisis. So when the Holy Spirit is in the individual, yes, you become, you will uh, practice certain religious things. But my friend, if you don't have the fruit of peace, joy and you you know that the 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 condemnation of your sin has been removed now now remember a follower of Christ may fall and many of us do but we we still have the comforter sending us and wooing us to get back to the cross and to come boldly before the throne of grace but when the spirit the disposition of religion is driving a person without the spirit of the living God in you. This is why Paul told the church in Corinth in that letter, please test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Let me tell you first, my friend, the number one way that the spirit of religion is getting into people is because of the false church. The false church is ran by mortal men and women who have not been sent by Jesus. The number one way in is false altar calls. That's the number one way they get in where people are saying this, this has become a tradition where men or women at the end of the church service will stand up and say, um, they call you for three reasons. And the first thing they say is now the doors of the church are open. My friend, that is not biblical. There is nowhere in the New Testament where you find such a thing. So when a person tells you the doors of the church, the question is what church and what doors? And then when they tell you, is there anybody here that wants to give their heart to Jesus Christ? And they will tell you to, they will lead you in a prayer. Friend, this is very, very pervasive in many institutional churches where many young preachers who have not been sent by Jesus are mimicking these traditions that are doorways to a false spirit of religion and a false Jesus. Devils. Oh, yes, my friend. When a person tells you, ask Jesus to come into your heart, that is not biblical. The Bible never taught us to ask Jesus in our heart. Why? Because where is Jesus right now as we, as you're watching me on this video? The Bible says that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for the church, for the real called out ones. He's interceding. He's the high priest sitting at the right hand of God. That's where Jesus is. And Jesus told us that I, before his death, he said, I have to go. But I will pray to the Father and he will send, he will give you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Follow me, my friend. When you ask Jesus into your heart, the Bible says that our heart, follow me very close, friend. In Jeremiah chapter 17, the heart is deceitful. And it is desperately wicked. The heart is often referred to as your mind, your will, and your emotions. But my friend, that's your soul, okay? 
excuse me, and when Jesus via Holy Spirit comes into the person, he is coming into your spirit. So when you, because remember now, God is spirit and they that worship, worship in spirit and in truth. The spirit of man is the epicenter of consciousness. And your conscious is what is brought back alive to God. Before Christ, before believing on Christ, because that's what the, the New Testament teaches us, to believe. When Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says he preached and the people's hearts were pricked. And they, he had preached repent or perish. That's what he preached. Their hearts were pricked. Nowhere did Peter lead them in a prayer. Everybody lift your hands. Now ask Jesus to come into your heart. Friend, this is the number one reason people are being infiltrated with demon spirits of religion. And these spirits will have you thinking that you're serving the true and the living God, when in fact, you begin to serve the institutional church. And in the institutional church, you will find that they do what? They police the laws. They police the Old Testament laws given to Moses. Most popular is the law of tithing that was in the Levitical ceremonial laws. When you have a spirit of religion, you become prideful and you will fight, my friend, over your dogma. You will fight over doctrine. You will bash and beat people about doctrine about tradition. And this is where we find that many people, let me stay on what God said, who pride themselves on tithing have no joy. They have no peace. They have no ministry. They have no confession for Jesus Christ. They live defeated lives. Why? Because they are serving a false Jesus and they are being driven by law. Because my friend, at the root of religion is pride. I am prideful because I keep the law. And this is why, my friend, masses, multitudes of people are depressed, suicidal, church going, faithful tithers. They're the deacons. They're the pastors. This is why many pastors commit suicide because they are serving a false Jesus. Where Jesus is, there is life. There is liberty. There is an exaltation of freedom in him, not mortal men, not law, not, not tradition, because tradition conditions the heart and tradition is beliefs that are passed down from generation to generation. And when there is no inspection of these traditions, people receive them because why? It's easy. Tradition is easy. And this is why, my friend, unless you are sincerely hungry for God, you can and you will be deceived. The institutional church has evangelists who will preach. Now, remember, I'm giving you how this spirit gets in right now in the modern church. It's through these false altar calls that man has concocted. And you must remember, Jesus has preachers and prophets, and so does 
our adversary. They will transform themselves as angels of light. So Jesus and God the Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he has preachers and teachers. And our adversary has a lot of them just the same. They, this spirit, because Jesus was never told, we were never, he never said nowhere to tell the people to come into my heart, Jesus. And because you're asking these demons, that's what it really what it is. It's an unclean spirit. It'll drive you crazy with the law. And it will also trick you when you are doing your, your religious acts, your regimented every Sunday, every midweek service. Some people go three, four times a week. But my friend, there's no fruit. I'm going to give you what to look for. Number two, number one, it gets in through the false fake altar calls. My friend, listen to me and hear me very well. Any preacher that gives an altar call, that's not what the disciples were doing. Jesus said, go and make disciples. He didn't say go and, 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 and line them up and tell them that he didn't give out none of the instructions that we're doing as our way of helping people come to Jesus. When a preacher gives an altar call, oftentimes, I said often, it's not for the true and the living God. Because when they usually call the people up to the altar, what do they do next? They say, now you are saved. Now follow, they'll have a little lady or a brother and say, now follow brother or sister so-and-so. They're going to give you some materials. And you're saved. Now find a good Bible teaching church. Follow me. Find a church. Get into a church. No. Mm -mm. They usually will tell you in the next bulletin that 75 people gave their hearts to Christ last week. They will tell you, sometimes right there in a revival meeting, they will count the 25 to 50 people that came up. They'll count them right there. And then what do the preachers start doing? Boasting and bragging. Look how many came. They will tell you at, at the end of the month, we, we have um, 400 people gave their hearts to Christ last month and we baptized 200 of them. My friend, this is not of God. Why? For, no, for one reason, we cannot gauge the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not ignore him the day he provokes you, which tells us Holy Spirit, he could provoke you and you ignore him. And then the preacher will tell you to come and the doors of the church is open. And my friend, what happens? You think that you are safe and you're not because you grieve the Holy Spirit, you ignore the Holy Spirit, and now the preacher is going to just pronounce you saved. No, my friend, we, we don't know what's happening with you. You can make a public confession and walk right back out of that church meeting and go back home to your lover. And there has been no conversion on the inside of the heart the spirit of man, because once he gets in the spirit, the heart knows, oh yes, because Holy Spirit then starts speaking and your, your cognitive thoughts are able to now correspond with your conscience. So now they done sent you home with a fake Jesus. And the question on the floor is which one came into your heart? Because you went right back to that fornication, went right back to drinking that alcohol. You went right back to lusting in, in that computer with all that uh, uh, pornography with no conviction. But the preacher told you, you now have Jesus. Now, what Jesus is this? Number two, it gets in this spirit of religion and this false Jesus comes through generation generationally. You will hear people that have the spirit of religion. They'll say stuff like this. I was raised in the church. You'll ask them, well, when did you give your heart to Christ? I've always been a Christian. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I was a Christian since I was two. I got baptized when I was two. You have a spirit of religion, my friend, 
because you should know when something happens on the inside, the spirit, the conscience, you have an awakening. It never leaves you unless you, my friend, listen, I remember vividly going from death to life. I remember my life was turned up side down. When Jesus Christ regenerated my conscience, my spirit man came alive to God. I remember 19, I was 21 years old in a one bedroom apartment. And I remember immediately it's as if my eyes were open and, and, and I start hearing the voice of Holy spirit didn't know it was him at the time to get a Bible. That's the first thing he told me. Then he told me to put some clothes on. That was the number. I'm like, wow, Sharon, you, this nakedness, this is provocative. I just knew it was wrong. He told me to stop smoking Newport 100. I had went from death to life. I remember I went to this place where I used to pick up men and men would pick, you know, it was just, it was a skating rink and everybody was picking up everybody. That's, you want a man, just go out there. (laughs) <laughs> and I remember the Holy Ghost and I was so ju- juvial because I knew I can't get, come back here. The Holy Spirit, when you have a true rebirth and you're truly regenerated, the Holy Spirit comes, friend, and he is, he is, he is in your conscious now. And now you are aware of what's wrong, what's clean, what's unclean. But see, when you, when, when the preacher has pronounced you saved, you walk out with no experience. It's topical. You cried. You, 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 you was weeping. You shook his hand. He hugged you. And, but that doesn't mean you met the real Jesus. You met the false Jesus that they said, they told you to lift your hands and let him in. Mm -mm. My friend, this is getting laborious. Tune in for part two. God bless you.